Hi, um, this is Akshay Sura from NTT Data. Uh, today we'll be going through how to install and configure the custom workflow comments module. Um, I went ahead and installed a um, base version of Sitecore 7. It's a revision 130918. Um, didn't really do much other than just turn on the standard values. I'm going to turn on the, the buckets as well. So um, just to go over it by default, um, there's really nothing on Sitecore other than this one sample item, which has their which has its workflow set to the default workflow. So let's go ahead and add uh, a sample item. So I'm just going to call it sample item. Hit OK. By default, it's going to tell me you know, to publish it. It has to go through the workflow, which is fine. Let's go ahead and try to look at that. Open up workflow. Make sure we pick the sample workflow. All right, over here, just to demonstrate um, how a standard workflow works. If I hit the, the more link, as you can see, it's just a simple box. Um, I'm going to go ahead and submit this. I'm going to enter standard workflow, submit, hit OK. I'm going to go ahead again and I'm going to reject it. And then um, over here, now if we take a look at it, you're going to see the standard comments, which is uh, workflow submit and then the rejected, which I did. So now let's just go ahead and um, follow my uh, instruction instructions for the setup, which I mentioned on the module. So let's go ahead and um, install the module. Right now this is the version 1 so it has all the base capabilities. I'm planning on adding more features to it. Um, apparently there's a lot of need for it. I do get a lot of requests for this model um, which is what prompted me to build it. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Um, you can find the instructions here as well. Hit next and install. Okay, so the this is the only um, item we're going to override. This is the base workflow. All we're trying to do is make it inherit one of the one of the templates the module installs. Go ahead and hit uh, override. Once it's done, I'm um, just going to restart the Sitecore client and let it come back up. Once the client is back, let's uh, go ahead and take a look at what all was uh, installed. Alright, as you can see, um, you see a new item workflow comments if you right click in the gutter. Um, select item buckets it's going to show us that that is an item bucket now let's uh, look into the templates so basically there are three templates um, one is called settings this um, this is the template which we are going which we modified the workflow template to inherit so this enables us to specify which template is um, um, is, is the custom workflow template for us to display dynamically 
Um, this is the custom workflow comments item. Basically, this stores which item the actions have been performed on. And this is the base which the custom template needs to inherit. Basically, this has the, um, uh, the bucketable um, selected. So if we have a look at the item bucket on the standard values. Uh, you can see the bucketable selected on that one. So those are the three modules over there as well as if you look under system workflow and the workflow template Basically what we did is we made that this template inherit the settings template which gives us access to the, the custom template. Alright, the next order of business is for us to define a custom um, template we would like to gather information from. So let's go ahead. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm calling this uh, site sticks and more stakes since I love stakes so much. I'm going to define a template. I'm going to call it um, my custom workflow template. Go ahead and create that. And I'm going to get um, the name. I'm going to leave that as a single line text. I'm going to get the, um, say, the release date. And we can set this to date. And then comments. And then this can be rich text. I'm going to save that. And then I am going to inherit the base uh, make sure this is bucketable save it Once that is done, what we need to do is, for more purposes, I'm going to pick the sample workflow, uh, which is automatically assigned to the sample item. As you can see, we have the custom template in here. I'm going to go ahead and select the the my, my custom workflow template, which I just created. Um, just to make things a little bit easier, uh, in the application options, Just make sure bucket items are selected, which I did over there um, at the beginning of this video, as well as just make sure the developer tab is on. It just makes it easy. Um, and then click on the workflow comment. And just, you know, standard practice. I just like making sure I hit sync. And then, even though nothing's going to happen at this moment, I just like hitting Reins Tree just to give it a heads up saying, hey, I'm looking for items under this node. Okay, so at this point, if we go open our workbox. And, and you know as you can see you could still see the comments we had um, before I'm gonna go ahead and hit submit at this point it's gonna display the fields we defined uh, notice that 
we didn't define a UI it's automatically picking up the field type and as long as it's a standard sidecore field it's gonna pick it up so I'm gonna say sidecore tester I'm gonna leave the date empty um, I got a lot of requests for rich text comments um, so there is a need for it uh, I'm gonna make this bold this as italics and then I'm gonna hit OK and it comes to the approved state I'm gonna go ahead and reject it again Okay. All right, let me expand the draft and I'm going to show you the more. So as you can see over here, these are the two comments we had in the standard workflow. Uh, and as you can see over here, it does capture it. Right now it's only displaying the fields which have value. It doesn't make sense for us to display the date when we didn't specify the date. And you can see the um, the formatting we did, the italics and the bold. Um, the same uh, the same information is available if we are on the actual item. The review tab, it opens exactly the same workflow history, um, XML control, so it's going to have the same information we saw. So it's pretty much the same. Uh, what happens is that the information gets stored under the workflow comments and um, that's how we're able to we're able to pull the information through so as you can see it's added an item in the item bucket and we had you know basically two things one is where it was submitted one is where it was rejected so it's storing that as well as this is specific to the item ID, the language, and then so you know when the language changes or the version changes, the workflow is going to be kept separate for those. So the comments will say stay specific to the the item, language, and version. Um, I really hope this is uh, useful. I know a um, couple of the people I know who are currently in different companies uh, would be using this. The code is uh, pushed to GitHub. Um, as well as you can access the the um, the module in the marketplace so let me just go ahead so look for CWC you can find the module here uh, the link to github is here as well I have some instructions as well as um, some screenshots up here so feel free to use it let me know if you have any comments um, or questions um, and I'll be more than happy to answer them to you and uh, as well as um, the these instructions and building of the of the module are posted on our blog um, for identity data sitecore.com slash blog um, I have a couple of blog items here which walk you through how the module was built, what the premise was, what was the need. Um, so if there's anything um, which you come up with or if you have any questions please let me know. Uh, my email address is over here. It's uh, akshay.sura at nttdata.com. Thank you so much and uh, I